Dr. Marlo Hernandez is CEO of Kano Health. He joins us tonight. Doctor, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me, Tucker. Pleasure. Give us very quickly an overview of how, and, and just on, on the basis of the science, how this drug is being used in the United States as of tonight in response to this epidemic and what you think the results are. Sure, so the FDA approved the compassionate use of the medicine for patients uh, with uh, COVID-19 or presumptive for COVID-19. And so it is used uh, throughout uh, the country in hospitals. Uh, and uh, we've been finding some preliminary early success with it as we have uh, in Counter Health. So hospitals like uh, Massachusetts General Hospital, uh, where I practice down here in South Florida, the Memorial Healthcare uh, System. And there's a number that have developed actual protocols, our own Clinics have developed uh, protocols. We administer 46 medical centers, and our chief of medicine, Dr. Richard Aguilar, created a wonderful uh, protocol after much thought. And uh, the studies have been encouraging. Um, and uh, at this point, we're in a crisis. Uh, folks uh, uh, are suffering from this dangerous pandemic. And uh, hydroxychloroquine uh, is an important uh, weapon in our arsenal. Give us a sense of the effects of it. Um, good and bad. So we're, we're reading that it's combined sure. with erythromycin or some uh, a drug like that. Um, at what stage in the progression of the illness is it administered and what happens next? Right. So uh, there's, of course, debate because we have ongoing research. Uh, we can't make definitive pronouncements as to uh, when right. uh, we can use it or how long we should use it for. Uh, but there is a general consensus uh, in different uh, countries and among different doctors uh, that patients uh, with the disease uh, that have um, uh, risk factors uh, that could progress uh, and get complicated should uh, 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 be considered considered for this medicine. And uh, there's other uh, schools of thought in which potentially it could be even a preventative or a prophylaxis uh, uh, treatment. We've used it for both. We've used it uh, on over 100 patients. Um, and uh, we've had uh, success um, uh, preliminarily. Uh, but uh, I must stress that it must be under clinical supervision. Um, it must be right. shared decision making. Uh, the negative is that if you pair it with azithromycin, for example, um, it could prolong the QT and thus predispose the patient for uh, potentially serious cardiac adverse effects. So it must be given to the right patient and any medicine that you use. If you give it to the wrong patient and the wrong dose, the wrong formulation, it could have very serious adverse effects. However, hydroxychloroquine has a acceptable uh, safety uh, profile, a very good one. Uh, for decades we've known about it. Um, and if you have a patient uh, that uh, is suffering from this uh, illness uh, and other treatment options that also could be considered are not right for the patient, I would like to have that opportunity to prescribe it. Yeah, that seems like a very measured and straightforward response. It's, it's not clear why people are, are lying about this, but I, I appreciate your, your candor, Dr. Hernandez. Thanks so much for coming on tonight. My pleasure.